Only if who's not there, Lana Del Rey. Yeah. If Lana Del Rey is there, you don't want to get high by the beach? No, I want to be sober. You want to be as sober as possible if you're around Lana Del Rey? Yep. Good, good choice. Good life choices. That's why we're together. Yeah. I know. Love you. I love you too. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new cattle decapitation record. God damn, this <laughs> the title of this thing. The Anthropocene Extinction. Wanted to sort of semi-pronounce that correctly. Cattle Decapitation is a California death grind outfit. And this is like their sixth record. And for a while, they've been a band that I've kind of just admired from afar, but have never really been super into. I typically love the apocalyptic visuals of their records, especially how they sort of, you know, show humans being eaten or slaughtered or sort of treated in the same way that humans unfairly treat animals. What the f Consider veganism. <laughs> The band's music has also featured this stellar level of aggression and ferocity, and Cattle Decapitation right now also has one of the best vocalists in the metal game, Travis Ryan. I actually liked his vocals quite a bit on that Murder Construct record that came out a little while back. Not quite a gore grind record, but a pretty interesting and awesome and just cutthroat and deadly fusion of death metal and grindcore on this album. And I've, I've also enjoyed that Cattle Decapitation is a little more versatile versatile than most of the groups in their genre, partially because of Travis Ryan's vocals. He not only has these incredible animalistic screams and just guttural growls, but he can also slip into some very nice melodic vocals as well. However, not, not the type of singing that is a super corny or melodramatic or ooh yeah. Ah. His singing voice maintains this really weird high-pitched rasp that leaves him singing like a, some kind of mutant troll, like from a deep, dark, cave where no light is ever shining. For a while, I've thought that there's a lot to like about Cattle Decapitation, and even though I've never reviewed them or said, hey, this this band's great, you know, I've, I've seen why they're popular, I've seen their appeal, but there have been some things that have really held me back from liking them. For one, their earliest releases, I think, are a little kind of cliche for the gore grind genre. And then for the bigger, more breakout records in their catalog, the very sanitized, clean, just ultra perfect and flawless production styles on this record just kind of leave me cold. <sighs> With just all the flawless guitars and the just very punchy trigger drums, it just leaves me feeling like I'm, I'm not even listening to a band. In seeking that really perfect production sound, I think a lot of character tends to get sapped out of the performances and just the sound of the instruments too. However, I don't think that is as much the case on their new record over here, which I think is much chunkier, heavier, bassier. Even though that very tight, flawless production remains that does leave cattle decapitation feeling, sounding a little mechanical, the band does make sure to incorporate just more heavy, groovy, mosh-friendly riffs, some slower, more melodic guitar passages, and some legitimately catchy hooks where those raspy, melodic vocals sort of end up soaring over the mayhem with the guitars and the drums happening below. I think cattle decapitation is sounding just a little bit more organic on this record. And and not to say that, you know, they, they've gone uh, <laughs> lo-fi or analog or, or anything like that. I mean, this is still a very digital recording, but it does have, a, I, I think, a, a bit more of a human touch to it, which does leave this album sounding uh, listenable for me. But not like listenable in a pleasant way, like this is an easy metal record to listen to. This is still an extreme fucking metal record with just blast beats galore. It's a gruesome record. It's a fucking Brutal record, dude. It's fucking brutal. It's a style and it's a metal aesthetic that is really unforgiving. It's relentless. And even though Cattle Decapitation has a kind of unwelcoming sound on this record, that doesn't mean that there aren't good ideas here, man, because there are some really fiery, melodic guitar solos on this thing that are super impressive, especially on the song Clandestine Ways, which has one of the better sort of guitar spotlights on the entire record. Those raspy, melodic vocals, man, they come in and they provide just like the right amount of just, ooh, that just, that part just really freaking pops. There's so many banging riffs on this thing and just the winding, twisted song structures on these tracks are awesome as well and leave a lot of these songs feeling like uh, an onion and I'm just, with each listen, just peeling back one layer after another. The layers of guitars and drums and vocals on this thing, they may feel really squeezed 
and compartmentalized and, and edited and just very, very heavily groomed. And I do usually like my death metal a little bit more blood caked and, and gruesome. I like it to sound like a, a, just a really gory B-horror movie. But it, it, I, I, I can be swung over to the other side of the fence with this record. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's like watching Evil Dead versus like the Saw series or like, you know, some 2000s era Wes Craven or something like that. Just some high budget, super high gloss shit. The song Burden of Seven Billion on this record is actually a, a bit of an interlude in the middle of this record, kind of a breather, and sounds like something that that, that would do, do, do an amazing job of uh, like soundtracking a, a horror movie trailer. And the title of that track, as well as the title of this record, uh, I, I do want to mention, is uh, delivering a theme that is sort of about the, the point at which the ecosystem of the earth is altered by human interaction, by human existence, to the point where the earth no longer sustains human life, hence the sort of corpses all over the cover here. And that theme, that message, plays out in a pretty strong way in some of the lyrics on this record, especially on the, the track following that interlude, Mammals in Babylon, where the lyrics are actually uh, pretty awesome. So listening to this album, forcing myself to just really listen to it over and over and over, I've come to appreciate and sort of understand a little bit better what cattle decapitation is all about. And, and I like their style. I like their aesthetic. For, again, I've, I've appreciated it from afar. But what keeps me coming back to this record is that the writing is good. Despite Cattle Decapitation's very extreme sound, uh, there are some pretty well-written songs here. Not that I think they'll necessarily translate uh, perfectly to like acoustic guitars and pianos or anything like that, but I think there are tracks on this record that are legitimately catchy. And these songs don't just sound like this random barrage and, and onslaught of ugly guitars and blast beats and, and, and all that. Like the riffs and the swirling whirlwinds of drums and just very, very fast strummed guitars that, that I get caught up in like uh, they're a freaking tornado. These parts come together really well and create a lot of tension. And then once those melodic bits come in, once those slower, just guitar passages pop in, you're getting a lot of release, and it's it's a really cool roller coaster ride that a lot of these songs present. And Cattle Decapitation finds a great balance between those more intense spots, between those more melodic spots, on pretty much every track here. This record is, is a really good mix of being visceral and aggressive, but also just memorable and, and, and catchy too. It's super brutal, but there's a lot of finite detail to that brutality as well. Now, even though I like this record, I think it's fantastic, and I'm gonna be slapping it with a, a very positive score at the end of this review, uh, it does not come without, you know, sort of its uh, nitpicky complaints from me. It is slightly one-dimensional, and I do think as a result of that, not that any one part of the record suffers other than the end here, I think the closing track, the entire record is so freaking extreme. How exactly do you come out with like a big finale for 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 the last song here? Uh, I I think the last song doesn't really close out the record that well, especially with the uh, fade out at the very end. Even though Cattle Decapitation does try to build up to that moment with the preceding track, which is a bit of a very uh, ominous, gloomy, acoustic interlude, and then all of a sudden you're getting this really ferocious track in your face, kind of making it feel like you've had this breather there, making the song feel even more explosive. But really the only thing to me that makes this song uh, all that much different from any other track in the track listing here is that maybe it has the longest set of melodic vocal passages on the entire record, uh, which were nice, which went over well, but it wasn't enough for me to be like, ah, this, this is the closer here, this is the grand finale. I feel like this song could have been worked in at many different points earlier on the record, and it would have been fine. So yeah, this record can be slightly one-dimensional, but for a gore grind record, I do think the vocals that Travis Ryan brings to the table and the guitars uh, do provide enough versatility to make this album enjoyable and listenable even as it passes by the 40 minute mark. And there's also, again, the fact that sometimes those sung vocals do make me giggle a little bit. They sound cartoonish uh, at, at points, especially uh, when they're singing these really melodramatic vocals like, How can you look me in the eye? <laughs> and occasionally, I, I, I feel like the way 
the the instruments are, are edited to sound so unbelievably freaking flawless and tight sometimes can be a little distracting to me from the song, but that could be something that I, I just slowly get over with with more listens. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I again, I appreciate the band's aesthetic. I think the songs are written well. I think uh, the uh, guitars sound great. The drums are just, you know, a flurry. They're just super intense. They're just relentless. And uh, was super impressed with the vocals on most of these tracks, too. I'm feeling a decent, strong eight on this thing. Tran, Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? I hope you're doing well. Anthony Fantano, cattle to cap of fucking Tation forever.